you are one of thousands of people enjoying the content produced by Christ Community Church's C3 Media. First, we want to say thank you and let you know it's our pleasure to serve you. As a nonprofit organization, we are always looking for strategic and financial partners. If you are benefiting from our content, we ask that you consider partnering with us. Even a small donation like $1 per week would go a long way. Also, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for your continued support, and we know God has a great plan for your life. Now you are holy. You know, the Bible says that God's extended his holiness to you and me. We are holy ones, saints. Holy ones. So God says, God is holy, and God says, I'm ex- extending my holiness to you. Amen? Amen? I want to give Jesus a big hand that he loves you that much to give you the same things he's got. Oh, what a journey. It's good to see everyone. I need this more than you guys. But uh, many have heard before, but I've been out for several weeks. I had an accident that was unplanned. I uh, had multiple issues going on at the same time, from infections to sodium depletion in my electrolytes to uh, all types of other issues, and I collapsed on a sidewalk, hit it, blacked out, and uh, I can say I hit the sidewalk hard and the sidewalk won. And uh, so I broke five ribs on the right side, and uh, I've been ever since just believing God to get back. And I'll probably share a few more things out of my observations, but I used to say this every Sunday. We come in here for a while and say, how many are glad that you're here and not in a hospital room? (laughs) I can tell you from personal experience, it's much better to be here (laughs) than to be in a hospital room. But uh, I just want to give a special thanks out to the staff, the church staff, to you, the congregation, all your prayers uh, there were times when I was in the uh, hospital, I was there for five days, and I've been in the hospital that long before in my whole life, but I was there for five days, and uh, there were times, I'm just telling you, I was flat, spiritually depleted, everything, and just you could feel the prayers of the saints just lift you up off that bed of affliction. You could feel the intercession going on as people were just standing in the gap for me, and all I do is just say thank you for your prayers and your love and your concern, a few phone calls and text messages, and uh, it really buoys your spirit because a lot of times you're on that journey by yourself, and you are in you are in this uh, place where it's just you just got to trust God, and sometimes it feels like you just get overwhelmed by the circumstances and uh, the God's people standing in the gap. Also, like to say a special thanks to the church staff who filled in and did so many things while I was out for an extended period of time, and they're still doing an amazing job. Maybe no nay, she was sick throughout most of the holidays, and she just persevered. I'd like to say a special thanks, obviously, to Pastor Dina. I was supposed to speak on Christmas Eve for two of the three services, and she spoke all three, so she set the record. Most messages spoken in one day. Um, but that was good. And then I'd like to say a special thanks to my wife, Rebe, because she's taking care of me, nurturing back to health. So... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so this morning, I just say we're going to sing a little bit, and, I, and they brought everything up here because they're not for sure of what my endurance level is, but uh, Pastor Dina and Sell are going to share a little bit. We're going to sing some more. We've got a few minutes before we end. But I saw at the end of this service uh, having an extended prayer time because we're praying and fasting. So we see this service as a continuation of the prayer and fasting that uh, hopefully I can just share quickly some of the things I feel like God wants to do and that you can see some answers to prayer, that uh, we'll come forward and we'll have an open altar and just let you just intercede before the Lord. And so the Lord just took me to Revelation chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles, this will be very quick as I share some of these things. Pastor Dina, you can come on up. Um, I would like just to set the stage, as many of you know that the book of Revelation It's talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's talking about who he is. And if you go back to the first century, you have to realize that Christians were being blamed for every problem going on in the Roman Empire. That uh, as a minority group, the Christians were the ones that were saying, no, we're not worshiping the sun god, the moon god, or any other god. We're worshiping the one true god. His name is Jesus. Caesar Augustus is not God. Jesus is God. And we worship him. So when things would go wrong in the empire, they would just take it out on the Christians and just kill the Christians. 
It was genocide by, by the faith. This is whatever faith you were, if you were a Christian, you were to blame because you've upset the local gods and goddesses of the Roman Empire and the Greek empires, and so therefore you were to blame for why our harvest didn't come in. You're to blame on why our society's falling apart, and you find all this blame going on, and so Christians were the ones that were being marginalized, and yet God had a plan. So when they write this book to you, we'll read this in a minute, that's why there's so much symbolism in the book of Revelation, because if you were a Christian, they were going to kill you. It wasn't a matter of just you had a different faith. It was like, no, you sign up to follow Jesus, it's your death sentence. And that's what they were facing in the first century. And so God does some amazing things. But I'm just going to read the first four verses of chapter 1. It says, this is the unveiling of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to share with his loving servants what must occur swiftly. He signified it by sending his angel to his loving servant, John. I, John, bore witness to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. A joyous blessing rests upon the one who reads this message and upon those who hear and embrace the words of this prophecy for the appointed time is in your hands. Now just pause there and just stop just for a second. There's so many key words that are here, but this is one of the only times in the Bible it says you are blessed if you just read this book. And how many people avoid the book of Revelation because they don't like what it says? They don't don't understand it. What's written in symbols, the word signify there is the word for symbol. And God is saying through the apostle John, I'm giving you symbols. I'm writing in code. Why am I writing in code? Because I'm trying to keep you alive. If we came out directly and said things and the people who were enemies of the cross, enemies of the faith, would then take you out and murder you. It'd be like if we're all sitting here and all of a sudden people just walked in the door and brought out their guns and just murdered all of us, that wouldn't be too good, would it? That'd be a bad thing. And so God loves life, he loves for his people, so that's why in the first century it says these things to signify what goes on to say that it's an unveiling of who? Of Jesus Christ. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. And what's really funny is to have the first century believers who were being marginalized, criticized, ridiculed, persecuted, uh, murdered. They were just this little minority group. They were told that the person they believed in was the king of kings and the Lord of lords against the mighty Roman Empire. We can see 2,000 years later, the Roman Empire has disappeared, but the kingdom of God is bigger, greater, stronger than ever have been in the history of mankind. Amen. Amen. We are, living, we are living in the days of revival. We are living in the days where the kingdom of God and Jesus is unveiling himself. He's revealing himself. So while we're having corporate prayer and fasting, my heart's cry has been that God would just reveal himself to you in a new way. That Jesus, that maybe you were a, uh, used to seeing Jesus in a certain way, a static Jesus, religious Jesus, whatever, that Jesus would be that living Christ, that he would come and speak to you. And this is what John was saying. And he goes on to give you the progression. It says that God wanted to reveal his son, Jesus. So it originates with God. Everything that God says flows through his son, Jesus. Everything from the throne flows through Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the, uh, the mouthpiece for God. So God speaks through his son. God has this idea. He says, you know what? We need to get a revelation of Jesus to the churches. So I, God, am going to tell Jesus. So Jesus says, okay, let me call my angel. Could have been Gabriel. Could have been Michael. He says, now you're going to go to my servant John, and you're going to reveal to him some things that I, Jesus, have had hidden that are now being manifest right now. And then John says that I've got this vision. He's on the island of Patmos, and many of you know this, but John was burned, or the tradition has it by Fox's Book of Martyrs, that the apostle John, the beloved, was sentenced to death. They dipped him in a pot of boiling oil, Brought him on, brought him down. I don't know about you, but that just that just makes me just shudder to think about that. Put him in the boiling oil, pulled him back up, and there he was sitting on the seat. Just you know, hey, how you doing? They realized we can't kill the guy, 
So they said, well, banished to the Isle of Patmos. And it was on the Lord's day when he got this vision, this revelation of this Jesus. So when you read through the book of Revelation, some theologians say it's three visions. Some say it's seven visions. But it's all about unveiling Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all focused on Jesus. But it says it's symbolic. And so God says a lot of things about symbolism. He says to signify the things that are to come. It goes on to say that we have a joyous blessing, and I'll talk about this next week. There are seven blessings in the book of Revelation that you get when you study the Word of God and you read the prophecies and the promises that God makes to us as believers. It says that you get a joyous blessing rest upon the one who reads this message and they hear it and embrace the words of this prophecy. For it says, why? The appointed time is in your hands. Every promise that God makes is available to you, the believer, now. Every single promise that God makes is available to you now. How do you take it? By faith. What is faith? The Bible tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means if you're going through a financial struggle, you're going through a marital struggle, like me, going through a physical struggle, and your body is contradicting the Word of God I know what I believe in. The Bible is more true than the physical condition of my body. Your spirit lives in you. You are a three-part being. The spirit in you will live forever. When I was laying in that hospital bed and I was just racked in pain, I won't go through all my misery. Many of you say you're a wuss. Well, of course I'm a wuss. I'm a preacher. What do you expect? (laughs) But uh, I was laying in that hospital bed, and uh, I I I was hurting so bad. And I'm just like, God, I just, and I felt like the Lord said this. He said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in that moment, I realized if I leave my body, I'll be dead, but I'll be with the Lord. And you have to decide. You have to decide. Are you more spiritual or more more natural? You have to decide which way you want to live. Jim Bucci did a great job when he was preaching a couple of Sundays ago. He says, Faith reaches into the realm of the unseen, pulls the promises of God, and brings it and manifests it into this arena, this, this area that we live in. And so while we're praying and fasting as a corporate group, let's believe God like we're at a feast, and let's just believe God we can just get all the stuff we need right now. But when it, because it's spiritual, then there's a lot of symbolism that goes on, and this is what goes on in the book of Revelation. But it says the appointed time is in your hands. You make the choice what you want to believe. I can tell you this. is that my body's still recovering. It's still responding. But I said, God, you sent your word and healed us. Therefore, I am healed. Amen. As I coughed and hacked and grimaced in pain and all this other stuff, nurses put me in lockdown on my bed. I'd fallen over. I won't go through my whole story. But they locked, the only thing I was missing was braces or uh, handcuffs around my ankles and wrist to strap me to the bed. They made me, made me wear red socks. It means I couldn't walk anywhere by myself. You, guys, you realize how depressing that is? They, if, they had an alarm set on the bed. If I got out of the bed, the alarm went off and they came running in the room, get back in your bed. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? It's like, what? But anyway, the point is, is that my body was not lining up with the word of God, but the word of God is still true. Has everybody got that? So Pastor Dean, why don't you come and share about All right. Um, Just as Pastor Mitch was sharing, you know, I wanted to share a couple scriptures from Isaiah because these are part of the promises that we are holding on to as we go through this time of prayer and fasting. And and I could really um, press into them in the moment, but I feel like I'm going to share them. You know, Pastor Sal has something, and then we want to spend some time uh, having you come up and just really grabbing hold of what God has for you, spending time in his presence. But I want to remind you of some of these scriptures in Isaiah 58. So again, it's what we've been reading for our prayer and fasting. But beginning in verse 8, and this is in the Passion Translation, it says, Then my favor will bathe you in sunlight until you are like the dawn bursting through a dark night. And then suddenly... Your healing will manifest. And then suddenly your healing will manifest. Yes. 
You will see your righteousness march out before you, and the glory of Yahweh will protect you from all harm. Then Yahweh will answer you when you pray. When you cry out for help, he will say, I am here. I want you to hear that. I feel like God wants you to know he hears your heart cry. Even as Pastor Mitch is sharing about crying out to God through what he's just gone through. There's people here going through things. And even if you're not, you know somebody who is. And when you cry out to God, he says, I'm here. He hears you. He'll answer you. If you banish every form of oppression, the scornful accusations, and vicious slander, before I move on, our words are powerful. Because you notice in these scriptures, he said, if you banish every form of oppression, next two things are things that you speak. Scornful accusations and vicious slander. Our words are powerful. And that's why we want to know the word of God. We want to speak and declare the word of God. Because the word of God works. It's living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It says, and if you offer yourselves in compassion for the hungry and relieve those in misery, then your dawning light will rise in the darkness. And your gloom will turn into noonday splendor. Yahweh will always guide you where to go and what to do. He will fill you with refreshment, even when you are in a dry, difficult place. Is that good news? Yeah. He will fill you with refreshment, even when you are in a dry and difficult place. He will continually restore strength to you. Amen. So you will flourish like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing, trustworthy spring of blessing. I'm going to close with verse 12. Your people will build long deserted ruins, building anew on foundations laid long before you. You will be known as repairers of the cities and restorers of the communities. So yes, this is what God is doing in our lives and through our lives, but it's not just for us. He cares about our needs, but he's made promises for our community. And he's actually made promises. Pastor Mitch reminded me of these um, when we were talking over the holidays. You know, God's made promises over this church that we would be a catalyst for revival for our community. So as we're reading these scriptures about, you know, restores of the cities and the things he wants to do, we're a part of that. And God has promised that we would be. So as we build ourselves up, through prayer and fasting and spending time in the word, things we're doing, worship. God said, I have a promise for you. And he wants to transform our communities, our cities, our families, our lives. Those are the promises of God and things that we are going to press into. So, Sel, do you have? Because then I think we'll just let Sel share what's on his heart, and then we're going to dive into some prayer for these things and uh, see what God's going to do. I'm excited. Amen. So years ago, Pastor Mitch, we do this prayer and fasting thing. Pastor Mitch said something up on the stage, and I'm, I'm realizing it more and more, right? You said when you're praying and fasting, basically, like, things that could go wrong in your life, they seem to amplify, right? Like, right? This, you guys going through something similar? You, you're in a time of prayer and fasting. You're focusing, and, and Pasadena even said it. It's just the way I think of it is things are shaking. And the unstable things in your life, they start to rattle, like, in the wrong kind of way. And you feel uneasy, I've had quite a week. It's like you stop praying and fasting and you're, you're, you're into it. And then, whoa, what, what, what's that? What's that? What's going on there? What, you know, so just been thinking through that. And that word that Pastor Mitch shared years ago, I don't know how many years ago, just has been kind of holding me, <laughs> you know, it's sort of like this firm foundation. I don't read a scripted to you, but it, it just reminds you God is at work. It's a good thing that he's shaking you up. It's not because he hates you. It's not because he wants to hurt you. It's not because he's punishing you. It's because he wants to strip away all that is unstable in your life. So the only thing that remains 
is what he's planted, right? He is the firm foundation. So I want to read a scripture to you, and I know that's a song. I spied the song on the list, so <laughs> we'll read, read this scripture to you. Matthew 7, 24 and 25 from the Passion Translation. It says, everyone who hears my word, this is Jesus uh, uh, talking, everyone who hears my teaching and applies it to his life can be compared to a wise man who built his house on an unshakable foundation. When the rains fell and the floods came, with fierce winds beaten upon his house, it stood firm because of its strong foundation. And if you're not participating in this time, that's okay. Like, like, uh, like we, we said earlier, you, you could join in. And I encourage you to join in, if for nothing, just so that the Lord can do that shaking in your life. We're preparing for more in 2024, and I feel like the Lord wants to make room in your life. Say amen. amen. I feel like the Lord wants to remove things that have been holding you back, hindrances from your life. Say amen. amen. The things that you've wanted to shed, the things that you know are not good in your life, you've wanted to get rid of them, but you can't. This is the season the Lord wants to remove them from your life. Say amen. amen. So we're gonna, they're going to get into that worship song, and I want, you to, I want it to mean more to you, more than just some words you're singing. It's a prayer. It's a reminder that he is your firm foundation, the rock on which you stand, and everything will shake. And you know, it's a hard thing to invite him to shake it, right? Because it's a bit scary. But where do you want to be in your life? You want to be on the firm foundation or on sand? You want to be where he wants you or where you think you should be? Come on, how many of you want to say, I want to be where he wants me? Just say that, Lord, I want to be where you want me so I'm leaning in do what you want to do in my life I trust you yeah yeah we trust you Lord in Jesus name yeah hey while we're worshiping you want to come on up you want to stand you want to press in come on up this is it's an open altar you know come and lean into the Lord lean into what he's doing Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad. I put my trust in Jesus, cause he's never So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. I still got joy in chaos. I've got this that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not
church in the book of Revelation it says that things that occur swiftly are going to occur now and it's not talking about in the future if you read through this thing it says he's the God who was, who is and who is to come it also gives a picture of the church being a lampstand and Jesus was walking in the midst of the lampstand and I'm here to tell you Jesus is in our midst and I would, and I just, and I know no one wants to be the first but I'm just going to encourage the whole church come up here Come to the open altar. This is corporate anointing. God's going to do some amazing things. And I'm just asking you if you would just be obedient and just come and pray. Whatever the needs are in your room. I feel like they were going to do some healings this morning. And I'll just give you a quick one. I felt like there was a, a nose. If there was a person born with a nose, you're not breathing correctly through your nose. The Lord wants to heal that. I feel like there's another person with a nose injury through a sports injury. The Lord's going to put the cartilage back and heal that. So just take those things. But Come forward, and this is between you and the Lord. I'm telling you, being in that hospital room between me and Jesus, just having to talk to him, petition him. And many of you, you don't know this, I was praying for you, praying for you in my hospital room. Just that God put you on my heart, put you on my mind. So let's just bow our heads. This is a time that corporate anointing is here. I'm not coercing you. Music team, continue to sing, play, minister. He's here, whatever you want to sing. But this is between you and the Lord, and petition him. Maybe you've got... Uh, maybe just got some things that burdens on your own heart. This is for you to talk to him about. Maybe you've got uh, just, you know, issues that are just in your own soul and mind weighing you down. Maybe there's things, as Pastor Sh Sal shared about, that God wants to clip off from your life, things to prune, to trim, to uh, get rid of the things that are not producing the, the, the things that God wants to do in your life. You know, this time of year, everybody makes these big decisions about, oh, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to exercise more, I'm going to do all these things. And I'm here to declare to you that those things are good, they're valid, but your spiritual life, the part that no one can see, is the most important thing. When they have me in the ambulance and they're taking me away to the hospital, I can tell you this, my body was hurting but on the inside, my spirit man was alive, awake, alert. And I'm just telling you, your spiritual life is critical. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Jesus said, out of, the, out of your heart, out of your inner man will flow rivers of living water. If you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, I would encourage you at this moment just to pray in the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit just pray through you. And let God, let rivers of living water come pouring out. Let this time, this altar call, this corporate anointing, let it be where God just meets every need, every desire. Maybe you're like me, you're still going through some physical battles, some physical sufferings. Just believe God that he's the Lord of the now, that he's going to heal you, he's going to touch you, he's going to restore you right now. Faith is now. Believe God that it's now. Now he's manifesting, now he's fulfilling, now he's giving you all the things that are in the word of God, things that pertain, as Pastor Dina shared, to peace and prosperity. Father, we just give you thanks. Music team, we need to sing again. Let's sing, keep singing that same song if you want. Just whatever, you want me to pull it back. I didn't realize I was blocking things. Okay.
are so good. How many people feel like God's up to something? Yeah, yeah. And it's not just like, okay, for this moment while we're in church, but it's something big and it's something he's doing and going to continue to do and continue to do. And we get to be a part of that. So I want to take a moment before we dismiss. And if anybody wants somebody to pray with them, you have a need, uh, you want a prayer for healing, our prayer team will be on this side so you can go over there. But I just want to take one moment if there's anyone here or listening that hasn't said I want that relationship with Jesus because it all starts with him all these things we're doing all these things we're declaring it's nothing without him so I just want to take a moment and pray and if you just feel in your heart or maybe this is a moment you know like I need to rededicate my life to Jesus he never leaves you or forsake you but sometimes we walk away and God's right there with open arms welcoming you home. So I want to take that moment and just ask you to pray with me. Say, Jesus, I declare today that you are my Savior. I am nothing without you. I give you my whole life. And I receive your love and your forgiveness for my sins. I declare today that you are my Lord <laughs> and my Savior. <laughs> I am a new creation today in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Can we give him a shout of praise for everything he's doing today? Yeah. Jesus. All right. Well, you got anything left? We do. We uh, have one I more. I thought they did. So they're going to uh, lead us in one more song. You are dismissed. You want to stay. You want prayer. Let's do it. And we thank God. We are preparing for more in 2024. See you next week. We're about to make room for him. Make some room for the Lord, and he will fill it in amazing ways. I've experienced it.
You are one of thousands of people enjoying the content produced by Christ Community Church's C3 Media. First, we want to say thank you and let you know it's our pleasure to serve you. As a nonprofit organization, we are always looking for strategic and financial partners. If you are benefiting from our content, we ask that you consider partnering with us. Even a small donation like $1 per week would go a long way. Also, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for your continued support, and we know God has a great plan for your life.